Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson. And I'm Jason. My clothing feels like a spider web inman. Welcome to your mind university because we are Geek History Lesson, the podcast where we take one character from pop culture and we explain to you their entire history or web, wink, in less than an hour. And today's character is who, Ashley? It's Silk. Okay, okay, Ashley. I know that's a clothing, but... What is or who is Silk really? Uh, well, if we roll into the tens and origin, I can tell you more. But well, Silk, a, Silk is a Spider-Man character. Yeah, she's a Spider-Man character, right? And and perhaps why are we talking about Silk this week? Because she's got a big costume change. Oh, she's got a new costume for, change for all new Marvel Marvel Now 2.0. Marvel Now costume change time. Yes. Okay, uh, guys, thank you so much for listening. Let's hop right into the first section of this podcast, the ten cent origin, where we're going to give you the Cliff Notes version of everything you need to know about Silk in case you. Go to a fancy spider cocktail party somewhere in the multiverse, and a weird half mechanical, half spider person asks you about Silk. Yeah, more on that later. <laughs> so, so uh, Cindy Moon, aka Silk, is a human mutate, which in the Marvel Comics continuity, the publisher who publishes Silk, that means that you're a human and something happens to you and then you get special abilities. You are not a mutant, like kind the of the X-Men. opposite of what people call the metahuman. In the DC exactly. universe. Exactly. Yes. Uh, she's basically exactly like Peter Parker, if that helps you break it down a little easier. Uh, she is a Spider-Man family character derivative of the original, and she was created by Dan Slott and Humberto Ramos. Her first appearance, which was a cameo, uh, meaning a page or less, was in The Amazing Spider-Man Volume 3, Number 1, published in April of 2014. So she's a little baby comics character. Nice. Uh, in the history of everyone that we have ever talked about mm-hmm. here on Geek History she's Lesson. very young. She is very young. Probably but, one of the youngest characters we talked about. Yes, but, yeah. very, but very capable. And her team-ups have included Spider-Man, Spider-Woman, and Felicia Hardy, a.k.a. Black Cat. And her abilities include a master hand-to-hand combatant, as seems to be the status quo with our superheroes, superhuman strength, speed, agility, stamina, reflexes and endurance, a healing factor, long-range precognitive spider sense, iodetic memory, and the ability to cling to most surfaces and shoot very strong spider web strings from her fingers. Yes. Which is a way that she's different than Peter Parker because Peter Parker's Spider-Man has the web shooters that come from the wrists. Mm-hmm. They, are me- built. they are mechanical. He mm-hmm. built them. Silk has um, silken spider threads that come out of her fingers, all mm-hmm. ten of her fingers, and it's very fine and very strong, so she can weave clothing or a costume mm-hmm. or a net. Um, and it's sometimes, depending on who the artist is, really beautiful or really creepy, and I think both are appropriate choices for the character. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do want to point out that I mentioned team-ups as opposed to team affiliations because uh, at the time of the recording of this podcast, Silk has not appeared on any teams. Except for, like, s- the Spider Women, which aren't officially right, a Spider team. Right, Spider Women isn't a team, and the Web Warriors aren't a team. Well... They're considered team-ups, because I don't know the, why. The Web Warriors are a team, but she's not part of the Web Warriors. No, but she's been in the yes. Web Warriors comics, so mm-hmm. we're just, we're basically going to focus on her partnerships, because that's all she has to date. Got it. And now, uh, Can I ask a real quick question? Yeah. Why, because it's a very fascinating thing. You talked about the, the ten fingers. Yeah. And the spinning the webs from the fingers. Silk fingers. Now, Peter Parker, in most continuity, now in some storylines he does, he shoots webs, but in most continuity he builds his webs. His webs are a scientific invention that he creates himself. Mm -hmm. Do you think this is a reaction between male and female genes <laughs> interacting with the spider radiation. Um, I think that's a really cool idea, and I wish that I had thought about that before. I think it's a reaction to, in the movies, they made them organic. Mm-hmm. Um, so in the comics, when they were creating this new character, I thought they said, like, hey, let's give her organic spider well, webs. I will flip devil's advocate here for you that during the Peter Parker, the Peter Parker, the Tobey Maguire movies, yeah, yeah. they retconned. They did Peter retcon Par- it. Peter Parker got organic webbing mm-hmm. for, I think he had it for about three years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they did it specifically because of the Tobey Maguire movies. Yeah, I think it was something that was sort of, when they were creating this character, it was like, does she have organic mm-hmm. webs or not? And since... Uh, the the comparisons to Peter Parker are going to be lengthy. I think it was well. Peter has mechanical uh, web slinging abilities. So like, yeah, let's, let's give her, make a difference. This is one of the only things us. we can do besides her ethnicity Excelsior. and her gender to set her apart. Like because she's not a clone. 
Stan Lee um, here says you know, she doesn't use web spinners. Excelsior! Yeah, because there are a lot of female spider characters who are clones of Peter Parker. Yes. Um, and Silk is not a clone. She's a completely original character with similar abilities. So I think it's, a, it's another she way to... She is a human being. She is. It's another way to differentiate herself from Peter and then from a character like Spider-Gwen who came into popularity and prominence around the same time. Spider-Gwen uses uh, mechanical web slinging tools the same way that Spider-Man does. Sounds good to me. I just I, That was a question that popped into my mind. We went down the rabbit hole. <laughs> Doesn't matter. All right, let's move into the next section of the podcast, the meet cute, where Ashley and I are going to steal a term from romantic comedies and tell you where we first meeted and cuted this character. Exactly. Ashley. Jason. Where'd you first encounter Silk? Uh, so way back in the bygone days of 2014. My God, remember those good times? The clothes we wore back then. Oh, the, it was so wonderful. Such the an the inno- hairstyles. Such an innocent time. <laughs> um, I was working uh, for a comic book store called Earth 2, and uh, that was when uh, Spider-Verse was going down, and I was reading Spider-Verse when no one was in the shop, and that's where I first met uh, Cindy Moon, a.k.a. Silk. Now, I was definitely more on the Spider-Gwen bandwagon because I love Gwen Stacy. And totally. We've already done a Spider-Gwen episode in Geek History Lesson. Go look for it. We have. Um, she's just a character, too, that has a lot more history behind her. Yeah. Um, but I liked Silk, and then when she got her own solo series, when I became a fan of the character. Mm. So how about you? Where did you first meet cute uh, Silk? Honestly, I first met Silk in Previews Magazine. <laughs> That's a good answer. Now, Previews Magazine, if you don't know, is this giant magazine that comic book shops and comic book shop uh, purveyors use to order their comic books. It has, like, the cover or whatever, whatever, and C- yada, comes yada. out a uh, quarterly? Yeah, but it's basically how you order the books ahead of time. Mm-hmm. I think it comes out monthly now. Does it really? Yeah. Um, and Jesus. So I remember in that Amazing Spider-Man Volume 3, mm-hmm. I remember that volume because that was immediately after Superior Spider-Man. Superior Spider-Man was a storyline that I loved and read a lot. Mm-hmm. She, and we have also talked about it on the podcast. Exactly. <laughs> she was on the cover of one of those issues and she was... This, this no, the number one, she's on the... Oh, no, no her no, second she, appearance, no, she's no, on the she's cover. On, but she, whatever cover she's mm-hmm. on, she's wrapped in her webbing. Yes, because that was she doesn't origi- have a costume at the time. Exactly. So that was her original costume. Mm-hmm. And I remember a lot. I can remember whatever comic book shop I was in. I was probably Earth 2 Comics in Sherman Oaks. A lot of people were talking. There was a conversation about whether she was a good character or uh-huh. not because she's sort of a copy of because Peter Parker. Because she's so similar to Peter, yeah. Yes. And I was like, who is this character? And I started reading, and I, I liked her ever since. Cool. So there you go. All right, so let's move into the next section of the podcast, the main meat, as we like to call it. Yes. The, the The main dish. The, uh, the main spider meat. The main act. <laughs> yeah, the main, the main dish of spider meat. History 101, where Professor Ashley is going to make you open your tomes and discuss everything you need to know about Silk. Oh, man, I'm so excited. Mm-hmm. Uh, so as we discussed, she first appears in The Amazing Spider-Man Volume 3, Number 1, as a faceless cameo. Man, that issue is going to be worth so money because it's from so long ago. Um... You know, some people think it is. And she would go on to make several other faceless appearances throughout the volume's first arc story. So she does appear as kind of a background character, some set dressing here. Um, I don't know if she was originally planted with the idea of developing into a further character or if that's something that came later. I think so because Dan, I would imagine Dan so. Dan Slott, who is the guy who created uh, Silk, mm-hmm. he is a big Back in the day of the comic books, early comic books, 80s and 70s, they love to do what is called the subplot or the B plot. Yeah. So you'll see like, oh, the hero is fighting the villain for most of the issue. And then there's a page or two of this other thing. And that's definitely what the Silks reveal and the reveal that there's another yes. A person who was bit by the same spider mm-hmm. is definitely a B plot. She is definitely she was definitely set up. They were they were leading towards her. I think hundred uh, percent. And then she goes on to make her full debut in the Amazing Spider Man Volume Three Number Four from July of two thousand fourteen. I'm going to bet that Number Four is the one that she's on the cover of. That, uh, that you saw you're probably previous. right. Um, as part of a tie into the original Sin storyline. Because if I if I remember that cover right, I think she's in the exact same pose that Peter is on Amazing Spider Man Number One. She is. Yeah, it's yeah. a definite callback. Mm-hmm. Uh, so an ongoing title featuring Silk started being published in February of 2015. Uh, so at less than a year old, she's got her own solo series. Cool. Uh, and the scripts for that were written by Supernatural writer Robbie Thomas with art by Stacy Lee. And fun fact, Cosmopolitan Magazine. Ooh. Uh, that, um, Cosmopolitan. You know, that magazine of note uh, referred to Silk as, quote, Marvel's badass Asian-American heroine with a spider sense, end quote. Um, which is all accurate, but I just think that it's so interesting that 
Um, for such a young character who's so new to comics, she's already broken through the zeitgeist enough that someone at Cosmo is writing about sure. her. I think that is really cool. All right, so let's get deep into the fictional character history. That was all publication um, so, history. Yeah, that was all yeah. publication history. So 13 years ago, from whenever you're listening to this, during a demonstration on the use of radioactive rays at a science exhibit, a spider is accidentally exposed to a large amount of radiation. And in its dying moments, the spider bites Peter Parker. Stop me if you've heard this before. That is interesting that the story actually gives a hard date. Well, just so, hang on. <laughs> well, so I was like, so Peter Parker is 29? Because Peter Parker was bitten when he was 16. Mm-hmm. So that makes him 29. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So there, there you go. Some maths for you. Okay. But mere moments after biting Peter Parker, the spider bites another young student named Cindy Moon. Oh, we never saw it because the panel turned away. Soon after that. Damn you, Stanley. <laughs> damn you, camera angle. <laughs> she was back Dicko. there all the time in her cute little 60s and 70s Steve outfit. Steve Dicko was just too busy drinking his beers <laughs> and he forgot to draw her in. He was like. He was, I just want to imagine him like drinking a Bud Light, drawing Spider-Man like, oh, that Asian girl will be fine. He's like, I, can, I, put, in, I put in the Flash Thompson. I put in the, the Betty Brant. I, I put in the Gwen Stacy. Who am I forgetting? Nah, I didn't forget anybody. It's fine. I didn't. Leave that section of the panel blank. (laughs) Oh, that's so great. Uh, Soon after being bitten by a spider, as one would expect, her abilities manifest and she is unable to control them. There's actually, in a flashback that comes a little bit later, there's a really harrowing uh, moment because Cindy tells her parents... Um, about what's happened the to her. The spider bite and everything? About, yep. Oh, okay. And they find her in her room, and there's just spider webs everywhere. Oh, so and she, she's, she can't stop shooting the she webs. She can't, and she's, like, crying, and she's on the floor, and she's out of control, and, like, they hold her, and they say, you know, it's okay, we're going to help you. Um, but it's really kind of scary. Like, if you were a 13-year-old girl, 15-year-old girl, mm-hmm. it would be it would be sufficiently harrowing. I would think that you would, um, that would dehydrate her. Because usually, like, oh. a lot of superheroes, like, when I, especially the superheroes that can expel something, mm-hmm. get your mind out of the gutter, uh, they are all based on water. Like, Iceman is, like, determined on how hydrated it is. So you would think that, like, that would put her into, like, severe dehydration. And usually characters with healing factors have to eat a lot. Like, that's something yeah. that Captain America writers will bring up from time mm-hmm. to time. And Silk does have she, – she's not invulnerable, but she has a heightened healing factor as well. Understood. So I'm going to assume she eats a lot of pizza. Mm. So uh, – It is New York. It is New York. Mm-hmm. Uh, an indeterminate amount of time after this, a character named Ezekiel, who's a J. Michael Straczynski character. Oh, yes. <laughs> Do you like? Are you an Ezekiel love fan? I love Ezekiel. Oh, I don't like him. I love Ezekiel. I'm a huge. He's a bad guy. I am a huge fan of the J. Michael Straczynski run, the mm-hmm. beginning of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Ezekiel learns about Silk. He learns about Cindy's abilities, and he approaches the Moon family to offer his help and guidance to Cindy in controlling her newfound ability. He really kind of sweeps in and helps them out of a really difficult and strange situation. So after six years of training to use her power, so we've now gone 13 plus six years, so 19 years, Cindy is locked up inside a facility. No, we've gone six years since 16 is what we've gone. If she was 16 when she was bitten and we've gone six years. We're not sure because. So that means I, it that says she's thir- 21. 13. Oh. So. Okay. But let's just say she doesn't she's matter. She's 20 at one. She's around 20. Okay. Um, six years later. After six years of training to use her power, Cindy is locked up inside a facility by Ezekiel to protect her from the other, quote, her and the other spiders from Moreland and his family called the Inheritors. Okay. So who is Moreland? Well, I'm so glad that you asked that. Moreland is this character who's an energy vampire who feeds on totems, and he's the main villain of the, of Spider Verse. And the inheritors are these weird spider robots that work for him and do his bidding. He he's also um, it's he is very tough to explain. Now Moreland is also the main villain of J. Michael Straczynski's Spider Man run as yes. well. That's the first time that Spider-Man encounters him. That's the first Mm -hmm. time Spider-Man encounters Ezekiel. The idea is that in this storyline, J. Michael Straczynski introduces the idea that spider-based gods or Mm -hmm. beings like Spider-Man and Cindy are on a totem level. Yes, and and there are different – there's a hierarchy within the totem level. And Moreland's species is higher than Spider-Man. Right. So Um, he he eats 
spiders. Right. Like he's trying to, but he doesn't like eat them physically. He sucks the but energy like, out of them. Yeah. yeah. So he's a bad guy who wants to to hide all the spiders. And for her own good and for some other spider characters' own good, they're all locked in an underground, in various underground facilities and bunkers mm-hmm. all over the world. Um, and then so Cindy's underground and she's like, oh, this is kind of terrible. And then she next appears in the original Sin storyline, which is actually her first appearance in comics. This is all the stuff that happened before she got onto the page. So um, real quick, original Sin, uh, Nick Fury and the Avengers are investigating the murder of Uatu the Watcher, only to suffer trauma from what they see in his eye. It's because his me. eye is stolen out of his body. Yes. They also come into conflict with a group of misled self-appointed investigators led by Black Panther and Punisher. Um, And it takes place approximately seven years after Cindy went into the bunker. Mm -hmm. So she's now somewhere in her mid to late 20s. Yeah. Also, Original Sin is best forgotten. Right. (laughs) It is not a good storyline. But she appears in it. Sure. um, So we'll give it that. And so we have to talk about it. It's because, yeah, uh, and you may be talking about this, it's because this deals with all the heroes of the Marvel Universe see secrets or things that mm-hmm. they didn't know from Watu's eyes. And I assume you're going to talk That's about what, we're gonna, what, what Peter, what, Parker, what Peter sees. Parker sees. Right. So during the storyline, Spider-Man is exposed to the energy of the Watcher's eye. <gasps> and he <gasps> receives a vision of the radioactive spider that bit him, also biting Cindy Moon. Called Steve. Uh, <laughs> the spider called Steve. Uh, also biting Cindy Moon and learns what has happened to her afterward so that she couldn't control her powers. Everything with Ezekiel being put in the bunker. Oh, my God. This is kind of terrible. He immediately, he's like so racked with guilt. He immediately goes on a search for Cindy and is determined to break her out of the facility that Ezekiel had kept her in because Spider-Man's a good guy. Uh, he finds her and he frees her. Yay. Yay. And they live happily ever after. Except not. Oh, Sin- what? <laughs> well, Spider-Man always has a happy ending. We all know this. If you've ever read a Spider-Man comic, it always has a happy ending, right? Look, I will never forget when you asked me who Spider-Man's greatest villain was and told me it was poverty. It's poverty. So, uh, <laughs> um, not, not as pleased as you may suspect, Cindy immediately attacks Spider-Man in a fit of rage, saying that he has doomed them all. Aww. Oh, interesting. So she's uh, she's like, you put me back in the bunker. She's like, yeah, like I'm in the bunker for a reason. Leave me alone. There's free cable down here. Um, and then Spider-Man is able to calm Cindy down by telling her that Morlin is dead because she's been told that she's here because Morlin is hunting for her. Um, and so she leaves the bunker finally and is able to see New York City for the first time in seven years. Yay. Um, and she only really stops, like, she basically just breezes past Peter Parker um, to make a costume and some clothes out of her webbing. Because she's like, oh, I'm, like, in pajamas. This is mm-hmm. super She looks weird. like a mummy. She does. Um, and when Spider-Man asks what he should call her, because, of course, they haven't done a nice introduction yet, uh, he says to call her Silk. So there is her basic origin of the name. Peter Parker named her. Yes. Um, after an investigation, Silk is heartbroken to find out that her family has moved out of New York City. They've left her behind. And she and Peter also find out that they are powerfully attracted to each other due to their shared spider sense. Oh, I just want to uh, back up on that point about mm-hmm. Cindy's family. I just want to point out to all of our listeners that Cindy Moon's family, the Moon family, mm-hmm. are quite possibly... The smartest family in the Marvel Universe. Moving out of New York. <laughs> because every, everything in the Marvel Universe always happens in New York. And they are the one family in comic book history that's like, you know what? Let's get the hell out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of rude that they leave her underground, though. Well, they were told that Ezekiel was, like, treating her. So they thought that she was okay, that she was fine. Right. And if you know comics, uh, you know that that's probably not going to wind up being true. Oh, yeah, Dang it. and Spider comic. Okay, so Peter and Silk are just mm, turned on. They're by very each other. attracted to each other because they were bit by the same spider. Pheromones. So they are like, yeah, through pheromones, they're like pheromones. so attracted to each other. And I have thoughts about what they should do with that storyline, but we'll save those for the discussion. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Peter. Oh wait, Peter wouldn't sound. Like, Peter wouldn't be down there. Peter would be like, <laughs> well, maybe if he's hey, thirty. Hey, Cindy. <laughs> hey, Peter. <laughs> uh. <laughs> You smell like a spider. Yeah, so do you. Let's make out. Flip the whip. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see someone tweet that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so they're very attracted to each other. Uh, they figure this out right away. It's going to be an ongoing storyline. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I'm very curious about what your discussion is about now. I want to talk about that. Um, okay, cool. You we... actually know what I'm going to talk about, right, but cool. it's, it'll be fine. Um, <laughs> so, Silk finds out that Moreland might not 
or might actually still be alive. That he might not be dead. <laughs> right. And remember how Peter like coaxed her to come outdoors because he was like Morland's dead. Well, Peter, Peter did kill Morland. He did. Peter, yeah. Peter didn't lie to her. No, and and it almost killed him. It was like one of the toughest battles Spider Man's ever fought. Um, and she's so angry at him for the perceived lie that she attacks Peter again. Of course, comic books. Um, however, if you have small children in the room, cover their ears. <gasps> um, their attraction to each other leads them from fighting to hopping into bed and having carnal relations together. Oh, carnal relations. Yeah. So, I mean, Peter. Like at a carnival. Got it. Exactly. So, Peter kind of has a get out of jail free card because if him and Cindy just start fighting, they're just going to end up kissing. It'll be super great. It's all good. Uh, Peter stops as soon as Cindy begins to pull off his mask <gasps> um, because she hasn't seen him as Peter Parker yet. She only knows him as like Spider-Man. She might not like my face. Right. I mean, Peter's got a good face. Peter Parker's cute. Oh, uh, sure. Uh, Thanks. I think you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome, Peter. <laughs> um, after which, um, Cindy has nowhere to go, so she goes and stays with him uh, in him and Anna Maria's apartment. Now, let's explain who Anna Maria is. Okay, so in Superior Spider-Man... Yes. Um, which we talked a little bit about before. In the Peter Parker Gee Hitch lesson. Right, and yeah. in this lesson. Yeah. Um, is, which is the storyline where uh, Doc Ock puts his consciousness into Peter Parker's body. Mm-hmm. Uh, he forms a relationship with a scientist who is working for him named Anna Maria. Mm-hmm. And, who, and they live together. Yes. Uh, uh, Anna Maria is also a, a small person. Yeah. And, and one of my favorite recent Marvel comic characters. She's, she's al- awesome. <laughs> she's one of the greatest additions to the Spider-Man supporting cast, I would say, in the last 20 years. I keep secretly hoping that they're going to put her as, like, an extra character in one of the Marvel Legends packs. Ooh. Or as, like, a chaser. Like, I would love Marvel. That'd be really cool. Marvel. She Give does, me an Anna Maria. Yeah, she, I can make it. She doesn't really have a superhero costume, so that's probably why they haven't done it You put her in yet. the lab coat, though. It'd be yeah. cool. But, uh, so, so... So you get Peter, and you get... So, uh, Doc Ock... In Peter's body was mm-hmm. dating Anna Maria. Yes. Doc Ock's brain eventually got out of Peter's body. Peter got his body back. And Peter was suddenly found out he was dating this girl that he had never dated before. And they, of course, broke up. Right. Because he told – Peter being who he was, he told Anna Maria the entire truth. Yes. Yeah. It's actually – it's a really sweet and it's a really sad story beat for both the characters because they don't want to hurt each mm-hmm. other. Anna Maria, by the way, still in the Spider-Man comic book. Awesomely. She is his assistant now. Yeah. She's all – I think she might be smarter than him too, which I like. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's definitely smarter than Peter Parker. Um, so Silk kind of has somewhere to live for right now, but she needs a job. So Peter takes Cindy to go to Fact Channel, which is a new station in the Marvel Universe Spider-Man continuity that's definitely not BuzzFeed. Got it. And is run by J. Jonah Jameson. But on their way to Fact Channel, they're attacked by Black Cat and Electro. <laughs> no. And we learn that Silk is easily able to dodge Electro's lightning bolts thanks to her hyper spider speed and senses, which is a direct quote from the issue. And this hyper, it's it's called hyper spider speed because she has better spider speed and senses than Spider-Man does. Again. So she can dodge his lightning bolts when he can't. Again, this goes down to me to that point I was Women making. Women are just t- better spider No, I think it's interesting. <laughs> I always think it's interesting and it's fascinating storyline to find out this same exact spider radioactive juice, mm-hmm. whatever the, the spider injected into Peter, interacting with the female the female anatomy. Also a different, or, different ethnicity. Not anatomy. Or, yeah, different ethnicity. Like, I don't you're know. Right, anatomy, you're right. Female genetic makeup. Yeah. However you want to call it. Chromosomes. Like, chromosomes mm-hmm. is probably the right word. Interacting with the female chromosomes in a different way. It's the same thing as X-23 to Wolverine. Exactly. They have the same exact powers, but like, it differentiates because of the sexes. I think that's fascinating. Aw, oh, man, I would love to do an X-23 episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Black Cat... Uh, everybody that wants an X-23 episode, get ready for L- Logan. That, oh, man. Oh, uh, I didn't you, even think about that. And if you don't think we're not doing oh. that Wolverine episode when Logan comes out... Sweet. Uh, and you may be like, well, how is this all related to Spider-Man? Well, Logan and Spider-Man once teamed up. They, they bros. <laughs> yep. Wolverine's uh, in Spider-Verse, right? Yeah. yeah. He's in a bunch of Spider-Man stories. That's the event I want to see. Wolverse. Wolverse. <laughs> It's just Laura and Logan fighting each other. <laughs> Old man Logan shows up for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> Bring me a course. Oh, and then what's his son's name? Draken? Dakin? Dakin. He's dead. Dismal. <laughs> He'll just show- He's dead. He's so sad. Yeah, but it doesn't matter for the crossovers. I like Dakin. Uh, so, anyway, during this electric fight, um, Black Cat is also there, and 
uh, she she paralyzes Spider Man and she begins to unmask him um, on live TV, a la Civil War. Mm-hmm. Luckily, though, J. Jonah Jameson himself has hogged up too much of the space in front of the cameras giving a press conference, and he prevents this camera or anyone else from seeing Peter Parker's face and revealing Spider Man's true identity. It's ambiguous whether this is done on purpose or by accident. I mean, it depends. It's like, done by accident. I guess on how well you think of J. Jonah Jameson. It's done by, I, I, I read this storyline. I, I think it's an accident as well. I love that moment. I think it's so great mm-hmm. because J. Jonah is so mad when he finds out that he he messed it all up. Yeah. I think it's totally accident. Right. It's not. If it was Commissioner Gordon, it would be on purpose. Yes. But it's JJJ. So Silk quickly spins a temporary mask for Peter. It, he kind of looks like a mummy and escapes with him back into Peter and Anna Maria's apartment because where else are they going to go? They go to the later... Uh, they go to the waterfront later, where Parker Industries will be holding a demonstration for their new device meant to cure Electro of his powers and return him to his true human form. And let's explain Parker Industries real quick, because Parker Industries is another thing. A it's company, new. A company that showed up during the Superior Spider-Man storyline that was actually created when Doc Ock was in control of Peter's body. Mm-hmm. He basically wanted to create a company that where Doc Ock could build his inventions and be legitimate. Yep. Uh, and now that Peter has control of his body again, he now owns a company and he has employees, which is something that he's never, never had, had to deal before. with. I actually really like that complication. I like growing up Peter Parker a lot. So they're there trying to figure out if they can cure Electro or not. And in order to protect Peter from being attacked or from anything else going wrong and Spider-Man needing to show up, Cindy spins Peter some Electro-insulated web to prevent what happened during their last fight. So she spins webbing that I guess maybe has some rubber in it and is going to protect him if anything should go wrong. Do you want to know why uh, Electro was the villain of this uh, first storyline? Sure. Because this storyline came out at the exact same time as The Amazing Spider-Man 2 starring (laughs) Andrew Garfield and uh, Jamie Foxx as Electro. Yes. It's Um, called Corporate Synergy. I was actually hoping that uh, there was a cooler reason than that. No, it's called uh, Corporate Synergy. But there we have it. So when the fight that they were trying to prevent inevitably begins, Black Cat, that's hard to say. Black Cat. Black Cat. Just like the firework. Uh, Sabbath, what? Yeah, there's Black Cat fireworks. Are there? Yeah, geek history lesson for you, baby. I did. We don't play (laughs) with fireworks in my country. Uh, Black Cat sabotages the machine, which causes Electro to go out of control and fire off a bunch of electric bolts and hit a helicopter, yep. which is horrible. Silk uses her unique silk spinning abilities to spend um, and sends, ooh, excuse me, and saves the day. <laughs> she weaves so many webs and it's insulated and everything's okay. She catches the helicopter. Nobody dies. She brings everybody outside. They still manage to depower Electro and they don't get Black Cat uh, she scampers off into the night because you can never catch Black Cat. Mm. That would be what would be the point of that. Afterwards, Cindy gets accept uh, gets accepted for a job at the Fact Channel, which is totally not BuzzFeed, where she intends to use the information center in order to find her family. So she basically pulls a Clark Kent. Yeah. So she's where the news is happening, so she can use it to her own devices. It's a little bit selfish that she wants to use it to find her family instead of fighting crime, but she's been underground for almost a decade, so you can't really blame her. The next time we see Silk is in Spider-Verse. Yay! Yay! Which is where I first met her, so it's extra special. Yay! Because her title doesn't happen until after Spider-Verse, Doesn't happen until after Spider-Verse. Yeah, this is all, and and all the stuff that we've been talking about happens over a very small number of Amazing Spider-Man issues. It's like six issues, right? It's four, maybe? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, because she appears in six, but like two of them are cameos. Yeah. Um, So now we're up to Spider-Verse. Uh, so according to Marvel, uh, Spider-Verse is a storyline that features every Spider-Man that has appeared in other media, all under attack by Morlin and his family, the Inheritors, who are the spider robot things that we talked about a little bit ago. Spider-Verse is also the storyline that brought us the wonderful Spider-Gwen character. Yay! Uh, Spider-Man and Silk discuss their problems in which whenever they get too close, they feel like they have to, you know, hang out and try to come up with possible solutions to this because it is ruining their working relationship and their friendship. Friendship because Cindy doesn't really want to date Peter, and Peter definitely doesn't want to hate, doesn't want to date Cindy, but he wants to help her out because he's a caring and a nice guy, but they like can't focus when they're around each other. Okay. Uh, they wind up fighting Looter and his henchmen because they were stealing equipment and Spiderling costumes from Spider Island, and they don't get to finish their discussion or come up with any possible solutions because it's comics. While they are fighting, Silk and Spider Man team up with Spider Woman. Spider Girl. This is the Anya version of Spider Girl. Um, 
Or yeah, no, you're right, Anya. Anya, sorry, sorry. and they call her Aranya, which is Aranya, the, the, sp- the Spanish word for yes. spider. She's the blonde version. Mm-hmm. Um, and Spider Man 2099, and Spider Girl from Earth 982, aka Mayday Parker, and <gasps> Spider Man UK, and Spider Ham, <gasps> who's the piggy Spider Man. By the way, uh, we here have an affection for Mayday Parker, we the do. Spider Girl of the MC2 universe. So if any of you out there want to make a request for that lesson, please do. Ooh, I love that series. I do too. Well, also, I, by the way, we, have we, that extra figure. Yeah, we also uh, have already done a podcast on Spider-Man 2099. So just go back in, uh, in our archives and look for that one. I can't wait for people to ask for the Spider-Ham lesson. I'm so ready. That's going to, man, that's going to take a lot of comic book reading. Oh, man. <laughs> they be like 60 issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, Spider-Man wants Silk to be among those who accompany him to gather the other Spider-themed heroes because they're all kind of showing up. So he's like, well, we better go after them. Um, however, old man Spider-Man of Earth 4 from the old man Logan storyline, um, advises that Silk should stay behind because he doesn't think she can be trusted. Silk ends up following anyway because she's going to go where Peter is going to go, and this later angers old man Spider-Man when they arrive on Earth 928, where he mentions that Silk shouldn't have ever left her bunker and ought to have stayed where she belonged. Later on in the Spider-Verse event, Superior Spider-Man, Doc Ock's mind and Peter Parker's body, remember, blames Silk for an attack and suggests that they should kill her because she's bringing more problems to the team than good. Now, we should point out real quick, there's a couple things that we should point out just to make this a little bit clearer. Sure. One, just cool fact, the old Spider-Man of Earth 4 is not from the old man Logan storyline. Uh, he is just a future Spider-Man, but the cool fact is he's Ezekiel. He is Ezekiel dressed up as a different Spider-Man. Oh, oh, yeah. there's a Spider Girl from yes. Old Man Logan. She's the Spider Girl who's the daughter of Hawkeye. You're, 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 you're getting the two of them mixed up. It's <laughs> they're all, right. all old. <laughs> well, they're both future Spider-Man. They are, yeah, yeah. So that's the reason why you're going. Now, Superior Spider-Man. Remember how we talked about that? That was a past storyline. Uh huh. Now in Spider Verse, this oh, happened. Oh, I see. Yeah. Sp- Superior Spider-Man is able to show up because of time travel. Mm-hmm. So. The current Peter Parker is time traveling to actually talk to the old Peter Parker, who is actually Dr. Octopus inside his body. Yeah, it's... Just to make it make sense a little bit more. Right. But the thing that you really need to know is that they're all just hanging out trying to trying to figure out who is chasing them down. Exactly. And everybody out there, Spider-Verse is so uber complicated that if you wanted a Spider-Verse geek history lesson, let us know. That'd be cool. I'd be down for yep. that. Uh, Spider-Woman, Jessica Drew, uh, volunteers to follow Silk while Superior Spider-Man sends Spider-Man Noir to accompany them and help them on their mission. So then after Spider-Man of Earth 90214 is badly injured. My favorite Earth. Right. <laughs> um, he's he's really not that important. That's how we got to rise him. 90214. 90214. Okay. Uh, Silk and Spider-Woman have to take him back, back to Earth 90214 so that he can recuperate. So they're going to jump through um, the multiverse and they're going to go back to this Earth. Spider-Gwen and Spider-Girl. Again, Anya, the blonde Hispanic version. By the way, Spider-Man of Earth... 90214, I just Googled this, is Spider-Man Noir. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> whoops, they have to take Spider-Man Noir back to Spider-Man Noir. Look, Earth. everybody out there in listener land, Spider-Verse is complicated. It is so complicated. <laughs> okay, so let me recap. There's so many Spider-Men. <laughs> Superior Spider-Man tells Spider-Man Noir to take Silk and Spider-Woman on their mission. Yep. He gets injured. They die, have to take him back to Noir Land so he can feel better. Noir Land. <laughs> so good. All right. Uh, I think we're on, we're on track now. Spider-Gwen and Sp- uh, Spider-Girl, Anya, blonde Hispanic version, are ordered to supervise Silk, uh, but she runs off on her own with a her broken teleporter and gets into more trouble with some of the inheritors. They basically all fight. Mm-hmm. She flees to Earth-1. Earth One as zero zero one because it's the Marvel Universe, but it's still Earth One. Of course, uh, where she finds Jessica Drew from the six one six, and she is she's she's pretending in other dimensions to be their Jessica Drew, and there's a bunch of world hops after this until Silk is eventually captured by the Inheritors. Yes, so she winds up captured by the Inheritors. Great, who are Moreland's people. Yes. And she learns from them that she is one of the key totems that the inheritors are seeking, the bride. Yes. Which is a whole complicated thing in and of itself. The bride. Yes. And so the they're Spider Man. It's important that they collect these key totems, like the bride, yes. uh, in order to perform this final ritual. So during the final sacrifice of Silk, Benji Parker from uh, MC2 
and Kane and the Spider Army are all able to stop the Inheritors and save Silk and Benji. Yay! Now, Kane, in case you don't know, Kane is mm-hmm. sort of the, I want to say, failed Spider clone of Spider Man. I would say so. He's from the main Earth, Earth 616, the main Marvel universe that we're all, that we've been talking about this entire podcast. But he's sort of like the angry clone, and he is actually the second Scarlet Spider. He is. Yes. I like Kane a lot. Uh, but the important thing is they all come together and they save Silk at the end. She doesn't get sacrificed to did like she was supposed to. So at the end of Spider-Verse, Silk, Jessica Drew, and Spider-Man Peter Parker return to Earth-616 and go along with their lives. Then Silk gets her very own eponymous solo series because she was such a beloved breakout character during this event. She was a character that a lot of people responded very positively to. And this series focuses more on Cindy's personal life and her work life and the balance that she needs to find between both her personal and superheroic identities. It is your classic solo superhero series, basically. Um, Get a job, fight people. Right. And, oh, my God, which one's going to get more of my attention? I have to submit assignments. And wanting to move focus on the search for her family, Cindy moves out of a friend's apartment where she'd been staying because... Somewhere in between Spider-Verse, she moves out of Peter and Anna Maria's apartment into her friend's apartment, then only to move out of the apartment. And she moves back into her old bunker where she's familiar. It's one of the only places in New York City that she knows, Mm -hmm. uh, which she uses as a base of operations going forward. She discovers that her family has no official records of ever being around except for some old files. So she goes back to her old neighborhood. Runs across her old boyfriend, Hector, which sure is awkward. And unbeknownst to Silk, two mysterious figures are watching her whenever she's in the bunker. And the two two main villains of this first arc are characters named Dragonclaw and, of course, Black Cat. Oh, that name's familiar. But before I tell you about these villains, I want to tell you about another villain really quick. And this villain is one that Jason and I have created for our awesome new comic book series, Jupiter Jet. So, Jupiter Jet is the Rocketeer meets the Red Panda Adventures with a teenage girl driving the jetpack. All right, well, I'm going to slow you down right there. We, we, whoa, we made a comic book? We did make a comic book. Wow. And you know what? It's about a little girl who will do anything to keep her brother and their neighborhood safe in 1935. Sounds pretty cool to me. But remember I mentioned those villains? They're wielding ray guns. And they are tall, and they have glowing eyes, and they are full of mystery. And they want her jetpack no matter what. Exactly. So we want to bring the story to you. It is so cool. And we are launching a Kickstarter campaign for Jupiter Jet that you can see at www.jupiterjetcomic.com. Jupiterjetcomic.com. Yes. And we we need your help to make this comic book because like Geek History Lesson, Jason and I created this comic book together and we just want to make it the very best that it can possibly be. And everyone out there, if you know us, you know that we love telling stories. We love talking about stories. You've heard ideas on this podcast. This is our first five issue miniseries that we've ever done. Mm -hmm. uh, And it's a kind of a dream come true for both of us. It's amazing. But we need we're reaching out to you because we hope you like our stories on this podcast and we hope that you'd like to see like what our original story would be. Mm-hmm. And if you throw a donation our way, we have a lot of cool rewards, like an exclusive Jupiter Jet print from Nightwing writer Tim Seeley. That's a pretty big deal. Or you can even get a special lunch event with Jason and I and Collider Heroes host John Schnepp. Whoa, what? John Schnepp's going to tell you a lot of stories about the death of Superman He's going to tell you some amazing stories. You can get some Collider Heroes dirt. Oh, yeah. You can learn who's a jerk. Who's the jerk who on Collider Heroes. Who has coffee breath. It's all kinds of cool me. stuff. <laughs> and you can get all of this again if you go donate at jupiterjetcomic.com. But that's not it. We've got a special reward just for you awesome Geek History Lesson listeners. You guys can be part of the cool club Geek History Lesson yeah. listeners. Yeah. So if you go to Kickstarter, you donate at least $5, five measly dollars. Yeah. Then, this is important, you email jupiterjetcomic at gmail.com. Jupiterjetcomic at gmail.com. With the subject le- uh, subject title Geek History Lesson and a screenshot, of course, proving that you donated. We will send you a Geek History Lesson magnet that I made with my personal hands <gasps> and a personal message and maybe some free comics, too. We'll with, throw on some comic with, swag. From our collection with a handwritten note. Yeah. So again, just go to jupiterjetcomic.com. You can get our first comic book miniseries. We can share our amazing work with you. We need your help to do it. And thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody who has. Now, I want to just point out, 
there, we have a pretty decent listen, listenership. Mm. Pretty good group. People listen to Geek History Lesson, we I think. We love them. If everyone out there that listens to Geek History Lesson donated just one dollar. One dollar. Our comic book Jupiter Jet would be funded. Easy. Just one dollar. So out there, we know uh, sometimes times are tough or whatever. Any amount can help and can make a big difference. Please let us bring our original story to the world, jupiterjetcomic.com. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Now back to Silk. So in her solo series, Spider-Man thinks that Silk is not well. Not that she's not doing well, but maybe that she's not healthy. So he calls up his friends and former employers, the Fantastic Four, to check her out. Bring, 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 bring. Uh, hi, Baxter Building. Hi, it's Peter. Uh, I'm... Um, Spider-Man. Oh, hey, Spider-Man. It's the Invisible Woman. How oh, can I hey, help hi, you? Sue. Hi, Sue. Uh, hi. Uh, um, so I've got this friend. Friend? I've got this uh, l- friend, lover, uh, girlfriend. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, she's got some spider powers. That tends to happen around you. Uh, you guys have a doctor in the building? Several. Okay. Uh, are they free? Does it need to be a lady doctor? Peter, did you... Needs to be a spider doctor. Are you having a baby spider? No, 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 no. I'd like to. No, 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 no. Uh, can, can you just check out this friend I have? You, that can, has spider you powers. can just bring her, her by anytime. Still, maybe take some pictures send them to me. I don't know if you want to do that. I uh, can't X-rays. do that. You gotta... X-rays. X-rays? Don't ever talk to Johnny ever again. Oh, dang it. Okay, uh, so I'll send Silk over a three. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, great. Uh, can I borrow some Blu-rays too? Sure. Great. Only the Fantastic Four Blu rays. No, I don't want to watch that one. <laughs> oh, well, how about Amazing Spider Man 2? <laughs> I lost it. I, I sold it for rent. I really like your Peter Parker voice. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny. Okay, so Silk is like really annoyed that Peter Parker thinks she needs to go to the doctor, but she's a nice lady, so she consents to go and uh, have a checkup. But she becomes annoyed when Peter reveals. His uh, her whole personal history and about being in the bunker and Ezekiel to them, uh, and they learn that she's angry, but she is healthy. It's so a fair there's point. nothing wrong with her. Yeah. Uh, but in revenge, she and the Human Torch uh, go on a date of crime fighting, much Whoa. to Peter's chagrin. She literally only goes out with Johnny because Peter's like giving the mad side eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's actually a really sweet issue, and Johnny's really nice to her, so it's not the worst. It's thing. also interesting because at the genetic at the genetic level, Peter Parker unconsciously would probably view Cindy as his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Even unconsciously. I think so. And he or, or as belonging to and him. And he can't help it. Yeah, I agree. It would drive him crazy. Uh, so the next time Silk appears is in the Secret Wars storyline. And this storyline involves the Marvel Universe combining with various other alternate universes into Battle World so they can fight each other, a.k.a. a soft reboot. So... At Fact Channel, where she still works, luckily, Cindy suggests to her boss, J. Jonah Jameson, that she take pictures and report on Silk, because she's always getting these great pictures of her anyway, an idea which he absolutely Cindy. loves. Cindy! Uh, hi! Hi, boss! What's up? I Bring me pictures of that Silk! I definitely. That sounds like a great idea. Great googly moogly. Good job, Cindy. Great googly moogly. So one day, uh, JJJ looks at Cindy Moon's screen and finds out that she's been trying to find her family. And this leads her to kind of break down and tell her, tell him everything about her without being like, I'm still, and I was in a bunker. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, she's like, oh, I lost my family. It's so sad. Yeah. Uh, a couple of days pass. And then it is shown that there's this final incursion, right? All the... Earths are exploding and time is running out and everyone's saying their goodbyes and Cindy's super sad. So J. Jonah Jameson gives her a case file for a young boy who appears to be Cindy's brother. And he tells her that this is it. He should ta- She should take this opportunity. Don't worry about your work. Go and find this boy. So she literally runs straight out, going to the location that is listed in the file where she meets a boy now with an X-shaped scar on the left side of his head. And she hugs him and the world is ending and she tells her brother, I'm sorry. And then the world's end. <gasps> and goes right into Secret Wars. Uh, it turns and goes into Yeah, it, it goes into white. Secret Wars. She's not in Secret Wars. Yeah. But this is like, you know, in the, in the two issues lead up to Great. Secret Wars. Um, so then in the time, all... Time runs out, I believe is what it's called. Uh, yes, I think yeah. you're right. So then in all new, all different, all diverse, all timeline Marvel now, uh, Silk gets her own new series and a new number one issue in just... Just over a year of publication history, so why not? Because number ones are worth so much. Silk um, opens her series on a stakeout at a skating rink when her spider sense goes off and a group of Goblin Nation grunts are robbing a bank just outside. 
And she does a lot more monologuing in this series. She's a lot more like Peter in this series, actually, than in her first series. There's nothing wrong with that. No, I, I kind of like it. There's a lot of monologuing. Um, she reveals that she has been tailing the Goblin Nation for two weeks in order to avenge what happened to her brother, who, she tells us, um, had been infused with Goblin formula and now has no memory of what happened to their parents or that they were ever even related. Oh, no. Is he a Goblin? He's not a goblin, oh, okay. um, but something happened. Maybe something happened to his brain, and now he's in recovery because she finds him at this weird facility. Oh, weird. Silk slashes the goblin nation, grunts getaway car, and webs them up, taking their loot and safely depositing all of the money into Parker Industry Tech. Whoa. Because where else are you going to put money that you stole from people who stole it? Okay. Who knows? So she has no idea what could possibly what she's going to do next. So she returns to her now employer, Black Cat, who's working with who she is working with, despite the earlier antagonism that we talked about. And Black Cat scolds Cindy for showing up late and for showing mercy and tells her that it's that, you know, being good is bad for business when you're a bad guy. But have no fear, Silk friends. Silk is not actually working for Black Cat. She's working for S.H.I.E.L.D. She's just undercover and mocking. She's a, she's a double, double agent. She's a double agent. Got it. And Mockingbird is now her handler because Mockingbird just had a brand new number one series at this time. Mockingbird also at this time is uh, sort of Peter Parker's handler as well. Yes. So I think I kind of wonder if Bobby has been giving uh, her Bobby Moore. Yeah, Morse. Okay. M O R S. I kind of think Bobby Mockingbird has been given all the spider characters as her as her assignment. It's weird. That's so funny. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. She's an amazing Spider Man as his handler too. Oh well, then I'm gonna I'm gonna say yes. Yeah. All the spider characters of six one six. So that's them and Jessica Drew basically. Uh yeah yeah yeah. Cool. Silk Jessica Drew and and Peter Peter. Uh, so Silk also crosses over into the Spider Women event. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk about Spider Women really quickly. Um, what begins as a girls' morning out for brunch turns into a cross continuity caper as Cindy and Jessica are trapped in Gwen's Earth 65 universe while doppelgangers are running wild in their place in the main Marvel universe, Marvel 616. It's a really cute storyline. During this time, Cindy learns that her counterpart on Earth 65, home of Spider Gwen, is the cause of Gwen's powers. That's how Gwen. What? So. Spider Gwen got bit by the same spider that bit Silk because Peter doesn't get bit by a spider in this universe. Got it. Silk got bit first and then Gwen got bit. And um, her doppelganger has traveled to Prime Earth, Earth 616, to steal and reverse engineer the technology of the greatest minds of the universe for her warmongering ways because she's a bad guy. In Silk Earth is a bad guy. In Earth 65. Got it. Upon confronting Cindy 65 with Spider Gwen, Gwen loses her powers from Cindy 65's nanobots and then Cindy Prime, good Cindy. Um, she steals her name as Silk. She ruins her reputation while she's over there, so much so that Mockingbird thinks that she actually did all these crimes that she's accused of and is willing to cut all ties between Shield and Silk. Wow. Bad. It's bad news bears. Yeah. She then frees Black Cat. Uh, from the S.H.I.E.L.D. prisoner convoy, and good Cindy chooses to stay with Black Cat, continuing her undercover work, uh, and then later goes back to help Gwen and Jessica win the boss fight with Cindy65, who uses a big gauntlet that replicates the abilities from all the different universe's most formidable superheroes. That's pretty complicated. Right. So she basically has like a big glove and they can use it to whoever the writer is wants to be like, oh, you can now have um, Scarlet Witch's powers. And then she like. Poof. And Cindy has this glove now. Evil Cindy has this In glove. E- evil Cindy. Sorry. Cindy. Um, so good Cindy, Gwen and Jessica Drew take her down. Got it. Basically. So Cindy, as a result of her Earth-65 counterpart's defamation, earns more of Black Cat's trust, so that's lucky, to gain deeper intelligence into a criminal operation uh, and is still intending to complete her mission and get whatever S.H.I.E.L.D. has on her family's whereabouts. Because the agreement that they come to is S.H.I.E.L.D. will help her find her family if she is a double agent. So eventually Black Cat discovers that her alliance has been strong with Mockingbird, that she's working for Mockingbird, that, and this prompts Silk to fight with her. They have this awesome fight on a rooftop, and during this time, Cindy falls into a dumpster, which is, like, not so great. No, stinky. Um, <laughs> and is saved by a mysterious figure who's revealed to be Cindy's ex-boyfriend, Hector, who we mentioned super, super briefly a couple of minutes ago. This guy's kind of a stalker here. He is kind of. Um, right. And we learn that Hector moonlights as a minor character throughout Silk Solar Series, like I said. Um, but this is the most interesting thing he's done. And he is actually 
dead. He died while Cindy was in the bunker when a neighbor attempted to summon a demon in his apartment block. And this resulted in him wandering the material world and only able to manage tangentially when in combat. So he's like kind of dead, but kind of has superpowers. It's really weird. That's uh, that's disappointing. <laughs> that's really. I mean, I was waiting for you to tell me that he was a goblin or something like that. No, he's like which would have made more sense to me, or that he was an inheritor. He's dead, but he's just he's just kind of dead. He's but a he's kind of strong. That's it's weird. Okay, let's move on. Um. So then, Cindy, along with her two colleagues from work, Rafferty and Lola, who are super cute and also a nice lesbian couple, um, discover her secret identity as Silk. And Cindy, instead of denying it, embraces this opportunity to open up to them, which helps relieve some of her feelings of loneliness in the world, which is really nice. I remember this because there's a nice little beat with these friends. They're always trying to get her to go dancing. And she never wants to go. And she won't go because she's trying to go out and be Silk. Yeah. it's you're. It's I can't good, believe you remember that. That is the scene is so sweet. That's a good little beat. Yes. Um. So I've read some Silk. Well, look at you. Yeah, that's right. Um, So Rafferty reveals that they have discovered the location of Dr. Kapoor's lab. And Dr. Kapoor is someone that they've been chasing down for a long time who is attached to what happened to Silk's family. Got it. Understood. And it has been abandoned for months, but has a secret benefactor continually paying the rent. And isn't that suspicious? So the three of them travel to the lab's location, which, unbeknownst to them, is part of a trap for Silk set by a villain called Fang. That's a good villain name. (laughs) Uh, shortly after they arrive at the lab, they discover a dimensional doorway which leads them to the negative zone. <laughs> Where is this storyline going? Uh, it goes a little crazy. Okay. Uh, can, real quick, what's the negative zone? <laughs> the negative zone is the space between spaces, say the negative behind our positive universe that the Fantastic Four discovered. It is the home to a Nihilus, Blast Star, and many other alien creatures. Right. So upon journeying to the negative zone, Silk, Rafferty, and Lola relish the adventurous experience and befriend a medieval dragon called David. I'm not kidding. David, the medieval dragon, explains the continuing war of the Red Knight against the forces of evil of the Ash King and his army. This is all in the negative zone. This is all in the negative zone. So the three girls aid the Red Knight. After a big battle is won with the defeat of the Ash King, the Red King is revealed to be Cindy Moon's mom, Nari Moon. What? (laughs) Yeah. Nari explains to Cindy that she and her father who has become a prisoner of the Ash King sometime in the past, had originally traveled to the Negative Zone in search of a blue substance that they believed would be synthesized into an antidote for the spider bite that Cindy received, would nullify her powers, and remove the threat of the inheritors. Question. Answer. How the hell (laughs) did these suburbanites... Well, they're scientists, of course. Oh, they are? They are scientists. Okay, uh, statement retracted. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll give him a pass on that, even though this is a little... It's this is, really silly. This is quite stretching believability. We're, all, we're almost at the end, though. Oh, man. So then Cindy's father, Albert Moon Sr., is liberated from the prison. Of course, they go and save him. Uh, and soon after, the five say their goodbyes. They say goodbye to all their new friends in the negative zone, and all five humans re-enter the dimensional doorway. They come back to Earth 616. Isn't that cool? Mockingbird gives financial help to the family to form uh, in the form of an abode in which to live. They have a home now. And they begin rebuilding the bridges with each other and basically figuring out how to be a family. And Cindy is left to decide what to do with her life now that everyone is alive again. But what Cindy doesn't know is that her father, Albert Moon Sr., is in possession of the mysterious blue substance, and he delivers it to Fang, the bad guy from the beginning of this arc, who claims that it is time to, quote, put an end to Silk once and for all. Dun, dun, dun. And this brings us up to the event, The Clone Conspiracy, which is currently, oh. at the time of this podcast, ongoing. And not finished. And not finished. So this is where we're going to end yep. the Geek History lesson on Silk. Okay, cool. Uh, so why don't we move into... What a rec- weird ending. I know, into, oh into recommended reading. All right, recommended reading is where we have readings suggested based on this podcast. If you want to learn more about Silk, and if you want a full list of all the stuff we've ever recommended on the podcast, go to geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading. Yes. So um, I'm not going to recommend the Amazing Spider-Man stuff that she appears in because we have recommended that in the past. If we, ha- you, and we have? We have. If you scroll down... 
It is in some of our recommended reading sure. for the Spider-Man episodes. Um, so I'm going to recommend Silk Volume Zero, The Life and Times of Cindy Moon. It mm-hmm. is her first solo trade paperback. You don't have to know anything about her going into this. It's weird this. it's called Volume Zero, but cool. It is because then Volume One, which is called Sinister, is the post-Secret Wars stuff. Understood. So this is a post-Secret Wars branding. Okay. Um, so I'm going to recommend you pick up Volume Zero and Volume One. They're her first two solo story arcs. And I'm also going to recommend that you pick up Spider Women. Yeah, that sounded cool. Um, it is cool. And it's super cute, and you get a good sense of like what the different female spider characters have to offer, and I, I just really, really like that. Listeners, I'm going to read Spider Women. I'm going to go to our recommended reading list and click on the little thing and get it myself. There you go. Mm-hmm. Um, and because this Geek History Lesson on Silk went a little bit longer, I'm going to table our discussion for the Geek History Lesson Extra podcast, which okay. if you are a d- donor over at patreon.com slash jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N, you get exclusive contact uh, contact. Content? access to and exclusive content we're going to talk about Silk's new costume which is what set off this uh, in the first place we're going to talk about other Lady Spider characters and uh, we're going to throw down about which one we think our favorite is well real quick uh, just so the listeners get a little taste of this what what is your thoughts? Describe a little bit of what Silk's new costume is briefly, and what are your quick thoughts on it? Uh, Silk's new costume, very briefly, kind of looks like uh, a martial arts gi yes, that is cut closer to the body. And she has a bandana, too, right? Uh, she, she, had a, she had a bandana before, um, oh, and yeah. the color scheme is going from black and red to gray and yellow. Um, I think less than two years, uh, three, less than three years into a publication history is too soon to change that costume. And I don't think it's as nice as her original Spider as her original costume. costume. It is yeah. designed by Helen Chen, who I think is amazing and who did character designs on Big Hero 6 and Moana. Uh, and and is, she's a backup artist on Gotham Academy. I really like her. I love her work. It would be a great costume for someone other than Silk who has such an amazing costume to begin with. It doesn't with. really seem to have any indications that it's a spider character. No, it doesn't. Okay. I mean, yeah, as yeah, far yeah. as I've seen, yeah. it, it doesn't. Okay, so. cool. All right, so let's move into the next section of our podcast, the 10, not the 10 cent origin, the it's the teaching tweet that also starts with a T, where Ashley is going to tell you in 140 characters or less, based on Twitter, what she thinks of Silk. <clears throat> the amazing amnesiac spider Silk will, sw- will swing in with a new story for a news outlet that is definitely, definitely not BuzzFeed. Wait, she wrote a dragon once? Yay. <laughs> you know, that is my thought on Silk. Oh, my mama. Uh, the, the, oh man, the ending. I'm just like, I'm, I'm a little irritated by the ending. I didn't know that. And you yeah. talked about this dragon and it, they could have, they could have made such a great mystery out of that. It's, 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 I think it's really kind of a bummer because Silk is such a great, uh, word we like to throw in a lot, street level character. She's yeah. a great solo character. You don't need to take her to the cosmic cosmic of the Marvel universe to tell a great story with her. So she goes to the negative zone, rides a freaking dragon and fights demons. And you're just like. With her mom and dad. And saved by a ghost. And you're like, what? Yeah. Okay. Well, if you want to say what some more as you listen to some geek history lessons, just like that don't forget to find us on itunes stitcher and don't forget audio boom and guys when you go over to itunes make sure you rate and review us leave us a review because we'll read them on the podcast sometimes and rating us helps other people find the podcast just like you now ashley if they want to suggest uh, other kind of crazy events like mockingbird maybe uh mayday maybe mayday maybe spider-verse where can they do that they can do that at geekhistorylesson.com or Facebook.com slash Geek History Lesson. There are a bunch of different ways to contact us in both of those places. Come tweet thwip thwip at us on Twitter <laughs> for me at Jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N and for Ashley at Ashley V. Robinson and then head on over to Patreon.com slash Jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N to listen to our Geek History Lesson extra about female spider characters and other general discussion, correct? Yes. What's a little? What's another thing we're talking about? Uh, we're gonna we're, we're gonna throw down about which of the lady spiders we think is the best and then Who which... Who could beat the other ones? And then which of the spiders we think is the best. All right. That sounds exciting. And guys, very lastly, we're going to mention it one more time because it's so important to us and we really need your help. JupiterJetComic.com over please, on Kickstarter. Please, please. Our five issue mini series over there. We have some amazing art. Our artist Ben Matsuya uh, made some amazing pieces over there. Please, we really, really want to make that comic book. We need your help to do it. Please go over to Jupiter Jet Comic. Dot com. And and if you like Silk, it's also about a young, capable female character. Yes, and her little brother. Yes. Which also is, ties into Silk as well. So there you go. Uh, thank you for listening to Geek History Lesson. I am Jason. I'm not wearing Silk Inman. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. And Professor Ashley, will you please close down the web that is Silk? Class, spider biology is now dismissed. Thwip, thwip.